want you to know the truth. And he says, let me show you how consistent I am. Think about this. Between Adam and Jesus is 4,000 years. Think about that. The purpose of Jesus was created in the life of Adam. Mankind had to be what? Redeemed. That the purpose created. Go back to day three. Day three, he creates purpose for man. He places man in the garden and tells him what? Till the garden and calls it to come to pass. Right? So, day three, 1,000 years. Day four, he sets the sun and the moon. 2,000 years. Day five, he fills the water in the sky. 3,000 years. And day six, he fills the land and he creates man. 4,000 years. It's 4,000 years between the purpose of man in the creation, and it's 4,000 years in between Adam and Jesus. Now, I didn't know that. I'm telling you, the Lord showed me this. And I said, well, Lord, why are you showing me this? He says, the thing that I want you to know that I never gave man to men over time. I gave him dominion over everything in the garden, but I did not give him dominion over time. Time belongs to me. He says that time is a part of eternity. I am eternal. I am not held in the bounds of time. I am not encompassed in time. Time is encompassed in me. He said, as a matter of fact, before man sinned, he was eternal. Eternity was taken away from him because you remember in the garden, there was a tree of life and a tree of good and evil, right? You remember that he takes man out of the garden because he didn't want him to have access to the tree of life. And so now he takes him out of the garden. Man now is bound by time. He now has a date with death. Death marks the end of time a man has in the earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all following me? So, we look at God sometimes, this eternal God of ours, in the confines of time. When really time is confined in him. What was the purpose of Jesus? To redeem us to eternity, back into our original purpose, to where time does not matter. What time is in the earth is a curse because now we have to begin to operate our lives in boundaries. We only have so much time. The poem says, I only have a minute, 60 seconds in it. Didn't ask for it, didn't choose it, but I must account for it. If I what? Abuse it. Think about this. Whenever we punish people who commit crimes, we put them in where? Prison. And they call that doing time. We rob them of time. When you want to punish somebody, you rob them of time. When the devil wants to stop you, he's trying to rob you of time. Whenever he wants to trip you up, he doesn't go after Baby, he go, he'll go after your health, true enough, because you have to waste time going back and forth to the doctor. You have to waste time, you know, in, on, in bed recovering. But the thing that he really wants you to do is just waste time. Because if, you, if you're wasting time, you're not fulfilling your purpose in the what? The earth. He wants to cause you to waste time. Amen? Amen. Look at it this way. Hebrews 11, 13 says, All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. See, these men that they were talking about previous to these are we call the honor roll of faith. And he says, even they 
ran out of time. And these were faithful men. The question becomes today, what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your time? See, time proved faith in Noah when he started building an ark for an uh, ark <laughs> for 100 years based on a principle that it was going to rain, something that had never happened before on the face of earth. He did this for 100 years. People talking about him for 100 years. He walking them by with, with giraffes and elephants and people said, that, <laughs> like on that old crazy Noah. <laughs> I've had to endure it for 21 years. Noah had to endure it for 100. I take my hat off to Noah. <laughs> Time proved the faith of Abraham and Sarah when they were past childbearing years. And they still managed an Isaac. But think about this. Time proved the faithlessness of the children of Israel when God had led them out of the wilderness to the promised land. On their, on their way to the promised land. He had led them out of slavery. He had led them uh, by a pillar of fire at night, clouds by day, led them across the Red Sea, provided manna, provided quail, and all they did all the way was what? Murmur and complain. Time proved their faithlessness. In closing, I would like to leave you with this. Mankind had to wait over 4,000 years for Jesus to come. But you don't. Because Jesus is here right now. I know people get caught up in saying, well, where is he? And when is he coming back? Don't worry about that. I can tell you this, the safest place in the world to wait it out is in Jesus. It's in the purpose of Jesus. This is all about time. And I ask you, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, isn't it about time that you do? It's about time that you let him in. My time is up. <laughs> I figured y'all catch that. <laughs> I thank you for yours. I thank you for listening, and if you want to hear this sermon in its entirety, you can go to airjesus.com and type in the sermon 6323. We thank you for joining us at Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the word. Brothers of the Word, when the voice of God is heard, Brothers of the Word, there's a word from God for everyone. Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the word. Brothers of the Word.